It's a results fest on the JSC today. We've had Standard Bank, we've had Spur, we've had Exaro, we've had Sunnam. What else have we had? Aspen also coming out with numbers. And Equestra, and a really good set of numbers coming out of Equestra. These are the numbers for the six months to the end of December. And in the Power Lunch Johannesburg studio is Walter Hill, who is the CEO. Walter, I notice uh, revenue increased by 7%, it says here. Diluted headline earnings per share increasing over 31%. Operating profit up 17.1%. If you look at those numbers, that tells me there's some some efficiencies being garnered here over the last six months and maybe costs coming down? Uh, definitely. I think our contract mining business, uh, we've tidied up our contract management issues. Asset efficiencies are kicking in. Our industrial equipment uh, business, we've also improved efficiencies there. And uh, also good uh, sales on industrial equipment. Uh, we have not had any industrial uh, action or strike action in the past six months. And that was not luck. It took a lot of hard work. Uh, to avoid that. It has been a tense in, uh, industry. Uh, we were in the thick of things at uh, Marikana and we managed to keep the workforce stable and that has contributed uh, to revenue and to operating efficiencies. So just give us, before we get into various parts of the business, just elaborate on that a little bit uh, for us in terms of how you've managed to do that. In a very tense situation, we've just seen uh, news come out that Exara has a strike at two of its mines. I think uh, we, we had, uh, a year before Marikana, we had quite a major incident uh, in the Rustenburg area where they set a light and a lot of our equipment was damaged. We took a very specific executive strategy just to get closer to the trade unions and get closer to our staff. It has in many ways... What have they been telling you as you've gone through that process? I, I think uh, it's, it's uh, engagement and, mm -hmm. and uh, consultation. And we have engaged, we have consulted, and the process doesn't stop there. The, mani the fact that we managed to keep uh, it uh, at bay in the past uh, six months does not mean it's going to stop. I think uh, we have. We've introduced uh, medical aid systems for all our workers right down to the lowest level. It costs because the company has to pay its contribution. Uh, medical aid has always been in the company, but it was just accepted. It was not affordable at the lower levels and left there. We're getting them on the medical aids now. Uh, we're looking at transport allowances, traveling allowances. And I think it's about engagement and getting to, to get closer to our people. Mm -hmm. That has worked for us and we're going to continue doing that. Walter, I don't, before we get into the segmental analysis, I want to pick up on what Samantha just said and what you've just said. It's very important. You're almost sending a message to other players in the South African economy and say, if you treat people well, and when I say treat them well, I mean engage with them and tell them what's going on, uh, then the sort of incidences that we've had over the last uh, six to nine months can be avoided or ameliorated anyway. Most definitely. And I think that's, it's about engagement, it's about recognizing people, and I think understanding the living conditions of our people. Uh, a migrant labor has officially been stopped by government, but the reality in the Marikana, Rustenburg area, most of those people are migrant laborers. They don't have proper accommodation, their living conditions are not proper. And I think it's a reality. Migrant labor has gone underground because of the lack of, of jobs in South Africa, migrant labor is there and it'll move to where the work is. I think what we've realized is we've got to get close to the people and get to understand their conditions and see how we can make them uh, live in better conditions and work in better conditions. Let's talk about where your work is because a big chunk of your work now coming through from Mozambique. Uh, in fact, the Benga mine, uh, Rio Tinto's Benga mine, adding uh, that uh, considerable uh, sums to, to the contract mining and, and plant rental division and operating profit up 33% there, 246 million rand. But you've had issues there. Are those resolved uh, when it comes to compensation? You're going through a process now, in fact, to get compensation for delay and stoppage in work. I think uh, uh, Rio Tinto declared a force majeure for uh, something that we consider unrelated to us. Uh, 400 odd kilometers away from us, a line was, a co uh, railway line was flooded. It had nothing to do with our contract mining operation. Uh, they did stop it. We've agreed on, uh, 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 agreement has been reached in the terms of the uh, two week stoppage. And seven o'clock this morning, production started again. Uh, we have, sure. <laughs> <laughs> it's good. Uh, we've got 600 people there that uh, jobs depend and lives depend on it. Yeah. And I'm happy to say it started, the railway line started up last week and uh, within 24 hours we'll be back on full production. It's going to be trying there. I think What's infrastructure it? is an issue and we'll work with Rio Tinto to keep their costs down and uh, to get the coal out. I think that's something, there's no hostility. Uh, I think the remedy of a force measure was perhaps not appropriate. They had a problem. They couldn't get the coal out and we've dealt with it and its agreement has been reached on that. 
Walter, the highlight of the JSE today is your share price up 3.2%, as we've just seen on screen. What about the highlights of your operations, your different divisions, industrial equipment, fleet management and logistics, contract mining and plant rental? Maybe give us a little synopsis. I think highlights, uh, industrial equipment, our revenue generating assets are up. Uh, we, uh, our forklift business, 37% of the South African market share. It remains a market leader. The order book is looking good. Our uh, contract mining business, the commodity sector was depressed. Everybody expected Equestra uh, to, to lose contracts or contracts to shrink. Uh, we've actually got uh, our target 600,000 cubes per month, more uh, contracts. Uh, our order book in total has increased for the six month period to 19.3 billion. That is a 2 billion increase in our order book on the backdrop of industrial action and slow commodities. So we're very happy with our order book. And I think generally the efficiencies of the business uh, are improving and uh, are focused. We believe the next six months are still going to be tough, but the business is res uh, resilient and robust. And we have faith that we'll deliver good results. Where's growth coming from? Where's management focused on uh, you know, new contracts coming from, especially in the mining space? I think mining space, uh, the, the contract mining business, uh, we, we're not looking for expansion. We've got more than enough contracts and volumes for our existing base. Uh, our growth, we're focusing on uh, the leasing uh, and uh, fleet management division and the industrial equipment division. We're looking for the growth and the expansion there. Our heavy lift division within the industrial equipment division, that is the, the port, the handling equipment, the cranes, uh, they have got a good order book there. The forklift industry is picking up and we're also seeing a lot of new leasing corporate contracts coming out and we're positioning and uh, growing on that.